I can't believe they actually did it. Did what, Chibi? Tell me about it. I have a feeling. It's about that Yuri kiss. Let's see what he got to say. I honestly cannot believe that yeah. just happened. What? For Eminence and Chat. Claire? I mean, to yeah? be fair, this series does like playing with cliches and stuff and twisting them. And sure. doing some very unique takes on them. You know what's twisting? Mary's tongue in Claire's mouth. Sometimes. And just having Sid or Shadow appear at the end of this episode and interrupt the, like, dialogue of oh. Chris the oh I, oh, I thought... He baited me with a thumbnail. I thought it was going to be talking about the Yuri kiss. No, no, no. It's about fucking this Crimson dude monologuing like, <laughs> with this, this city will be mine. And then fucking I'm Atomic Style went over it. Done. Little boss, so to speak, dialogue. And as he's having this whole little ceremony, he's about to resurrect like the Blood Queen, the Vampire Lord, so to speak. Yeah. Sid appears while this man's giving a speech, talking about his love, like my dearly beloved and all that. And he's like, oh, we'll meet in matrimony. And as soon as he says this, you- Yeah, you- you are gonna meet a matrimony, bro. She is in hell. You going to hell right now. Favorite anime list? Uh, 100 Girlfriends? Eminence and Shadow this fall, Kai. You have Sid just obliterate him with I Am Atomic. And it's... What the fuck? You <laughs> built it up for what? How are you gonna do this to me? <laughs> I need more. Man, you just Dude, he better not be dead. Today's episode, I swear to God, if Crimson is dead and this arc is already over... I mean, I mean, fuck it. Let's go, I guess. Evans and Shadow is just so good, man. It is legitimately just peak. Fun. It's peak and Shadow. Incarnate. Eminence that and Peak. That is the emotion that swells up inside of me every time I watch an episode swells of the series. Swells up. Hey, episode two, legitimately fun. Yeah. Now, I want to. And the best part is everyone else is like fighting for their fucking life. It's a war between the three factions. You got like the Black Tower, the White Tower, the Red Tower. The ghouls are running amok. Everyone is fucking fighting for their lives, trying to not turn into a ghoul. Poe is fucking running. Scale has already been converted. People are dying. Everything is so serious. Mary is having a fucking flashback talking about how it's so important to resurrect and the Blood Queen and, and Claire. And, and you know, everything has happened to Shadow Gardens. They're doing research. And you know what Shadow's doing? Shadow is just. Fucking around, doing what he wants, pickpocketing, looting, just repeating NPC dialogue. The moon is red. The frenzy has begun. The awakening is near. It's just crazy when you think about it from the perspective of all the other characters in this show versus what Shadow is experiencing. And when you realize that, you'll be like, this shit is so ridiculous. But that's the best thing about Eminence and Shadow. I'm going to talk about a few things before I go any further. So it was clarified to me in the comment section on YouTube last week when I oh. did my uh, first impressions of season two. People told me that um, this arc, you know, this whole tower arc and all that with this city is actually, uh, it, yeah. it's a very short quick arc. And there's yeah, like short. three more arcs or so after this. So there is a lot. Three more arcs for season two. So season two is literally just four short arcs. Because I hear that people have been hyping up John Smith arc, but people have been also saying John Smith arc is also very short. A lot more content actually left, and people have even clarified to me. Maybe it'll literally be three episode arcs. Like four arcs? Three episodes, 12 episodes. Something like that? No, it's just three arcs in total? Okay, I want, personally, I want a longer arc. Because I feel like I'm more invested into a series when it's a more of a longer arc. Me, that there is even a potential possibility for a season three. So yep, now knowing it's gotta that, be. that's it's very gotta interesting. Be. So it kind of makes sense now why the pacing of this episode and the last episode was very quick because it's like, you know, the content technically is kind of short. I, I was honestly under the impression. Are we really almost caught up with the light novel? Or I, I thought based on the amount of light novel content they wanted to cover for season two, that's, you know, how much they're giving it. It was 12 episodes. But that's not really saying that we're running out of light novel content per se, right? Is the end of season two already getting caught up with the light novels? Do you guys know? Or like, do we have a lot of light novels left? Or how, how is that working? Impression that this whole vampire arc would legit be the entirety of season two. But I'm wrong. And I'm happy to be wrong. So I am curious to see about the different environments and where the story will go, etc. But uh, speaking of the environments and where the story will go. Yuri. These two, okay? Yuri. Seeing these two interact. Honestly, I did not expect that whole like kiss scene that we uh -huh. like, we literally uh -huh. have a whole kissing segment where yeah. these two like you yeah, right here on screen. I Anytime a vampire is introduced to an anime, here's one thing for sure you can expect. A fan service scene for the vampire 
Usually it's like a bite, right? It's like a bite and they'll suck the blood out, but they'll also make it super sexual <laughs> before the fan service, right? That's what I noticed. Anytime there's a vampire, you can expect a scene like that. Obviously, this isn't like a bite, but it's still kissing. It's the blood transfer, right? I was just like, wait, we have Yuri right now? This uh -huh. Yuri moment obviously uh -huh. led to, you know, the vampire being... Yo, Vil Hayes and Komari from Vexations of a Shutting Prince uh, Vampire. Do you think, like, I don't know if they're ever going to kiss, but it's like, damn, this show isn't even a Yuri, and it's already handling Yuri scenes faster than other actual Yuri anime. Be able to f uh, heal herself and be able to fight, but it's just like, whoa, not not a scene I expected. Straight Kino. Um, I wonder if that's going to go anywhere. I, I, it's probably hmm. just for a joke, but it... It's already out there, guys. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe it actually did. I already commissioned all the NSFW artists. Go somewhere. I got your back. We had a lot of war as well when it comes to the uh, possessed and also the vampires as well with this episode. There was some nice stuff throughout this episode, especially with these two. And, mm -hmm. uh, wow. Uh, wow. I ship it. No, I legit mm -hmm. ship it. But okay, <laughs> let, let's, let's get on to the actual content of this episode and all that. So... This episode had, you know, a Skell! very quick- No! You saw Skell there, right? No! Skell got turned into a ghoul, but I- There's no way they're getting rid of Skell like this so easily. It doesn't make sense. Even if he is just like a side supporting character, it makes no sense to toss him away. Maybe it'd be- I don't know. Poe is surviving, but I feel like we're gonna have some kind of antidote, some kind of way to convert these people back to normal. It's gonna be fine. And as soon as the moon turns into not red, I'm sure Skell will be fine. You know, a very quick pace to it. Just as how the first episode was, it kind of focuses on just setting up, like, a little bit about the, the queen. For instance, the... I personally, if all this, like, you know, there's a lot of exposition during this library scene that I, I edited out. Because, obviously, it's not the most exciting content. They're just kind of talking and talking. It is important for the for the backstory, but that's not what people are really watching this for. But I did love the Orion scenes, where Orion, as soon as she heard about Sid, that he might be in danger, that she fucking steps up. And then, and then fucking Beta's like, oh my god, I'm just babysitting these girls now. But, oh, 666, dude, Orianna's dedication is insane. Bloody queen and who she is. Is, she's ba is she bad? Is she evil? you know is she good etc kind of find out just from you know this episode and thanks to mary's overall description of the past since she was and it's not mary because the way that they pronounce mary it's like mary technically there you know the bloody queen or the vampire queen isn't necessarily a bad person she no. was just someone that you know eventually got uh twisted to be what she was at the end for instance thanks to crimson and all that that you know offered her blood uh she basically went mad mm -hmm. ravaged the entire population around her and she couldn't live with herself so she put a blade in her heart and she's been asleep for over a thousand years since then like is she gonna resurrect this episode like today's episode do you think she will or is this arc over i want something a little bit more i just feel like ending it like that is too too quick but knowing emerson shadow i could see that they, they just yeeted it and they're like that's it bye Crimson. Like, we just did this entire backstory of this, you know, Blood Queen and everything, and the importance of the resurrection and the Haven. None of that mattered. Bye. And obviously has other plans, and he wanted to resurrect her to be able to clearly have matrimony with her. I mean, that's what he even says. So he's basically a simp to the Vampire Queen, and he didn't want to see his queen not uh, drinking human blood, so to speak. So, mm. pretty... And is that artifact the same artifact that we saw in Season 1? Because it has, like... like if you're talking about like the shape, the design, it looks the same as the eye of what's it called? The eye of avarice. Is it the same one or do all artifacts look like that? Interesting there. It's a very cliche overall description and I guess motive. But once again, Eminence and Shadow is a series that is kind of, you know, entwined with cliches and it, you yeah. know, it executes it very well. And I think, like I said, you know, Crimson getting completely annihilated like he did. Mid monologue. Yep. End is pretty funny because it goes along with what Shadow said. Shadow basically says, maybe I'll go in first. I'll be very flashy, all that. And it's like, I was thinking to myself once the episode came to an end, like Shadow, if you annihilate someone instantly, okay, and nobody's there to see it, you're not really doing what you want to do. It's he said he wanted the flashy entrance, but how? I, I guess we're the audience at that point, but I, I just wanted a little bit more, you know? I, I love it when Shadow flexes on people, like the fight in Episode 5, Season 1, where he flexes on Zenon Griffey, telling him, like, oh, 
future member of the rounds, where is he? As he just bodies them without even using his sword. It's, oh, so good. It's like nobody can watch you fight this big baddie or villain or whatever if you instantly annihilate them without any witnesses whatsoever. And it's very clear that Shadow doesn't probably fully know everything about the Blood Queen or anything like that. So it's like, you know, he, he probably thinks that Crimson's literally the final boss and just he annihilated him right <laughs> yeah, then and there. It's just pretty like, much. Shadow, you just you ruined your own plans of what you want. But anyways, getting back on to the actual queen, though, I will say that um, it seems like... Oh, okay. God! <laughs> I remember that frame. I remember that I'll frame. that... Um, this reminds... As soon as I saw, th I saw that, my brain... Oh, what's up, Faris? My brain immediately went to Irina Rize, window back shots, Mushoku Tensei season two, episode... I don't know what number it was, but as soon as I saw that, there was an exact... Almost like a similar frame. <laughs> Jesus! It seems like this arc is probably going to wrap up yeah. next episode. She's also very flat, I noticed. She's actually too flat. Dude, I, 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 that's my educated guess, because it's like everything about what this backstory gave and all that, what it presented here, pretty much let us know that the next episode, if I had to take an educated guess, is going to be where the Bloody Queen is going to come back to life. Mm. Because, you know, we see that she's pretty much nine. Maybe the Blood Queen can come back and just join Shadow Garden, man. Do we have a lolly in our team yet? I mean, she looked pretty flat. Maybe she can be the lolly vampire that just joined to Shadow Garden, bro. Fuck it. Recruit another one. Mortal, from what has been described here with this episode, even with her stabbing her own heart and most vampires die, apparently she's just too powerful and that doesn't work. And, you know, she could resurrect if blood probably trickles down on her. And when you think about it, you know, Crimson dies here and... Did he, though? Because the head we saw roll around, I think, was the, the random body that he inserted the artifact into. I swear to God, someone told me to look a little bit closely. The hair looked different, so maybe Crimson's still around. I don't know. It's very possible upon his death that maybe blood was given to him. You know, his own blood hit her, and, you know, she might resurrect or something. And I maybe. feel like, you know, next episode's going to be more or less Sid having a fight with the Good. bloody queen. Good. That, that's my guess. But I could be wrong there. I could be completely wrong, and maybe that's not going to happen. Maybe he actually just did annihilate her, but... Uh, yeah, I think it was this guy's body that we put into. We will have to see where that one... So the head, the rolling around, we saw in the fucking... But Crimson got vaporized? Yeah, we did see the most, like... You know the cliche shit? Like, when someone gets hit by Kamehameha, and it's like a winning moment, you'll see their... Like, their... It, it, the, the anime tr scene just turns into just black and... This white and black. And then you can see the figure of them just slowly just, just vanishing away. We, Crimson got that treatment, so he got vaporized, but we'll see. Goes, but anyways, one weakness that we do know of when it comes to her, especially with the way this episode was presented, is that the sun still mm. affects her. Like, this whole little, you know, dialogue here is that yeah. she can still die to the sun. I mean, we don't really need to ever depend on stuff like that because, you know, we don't need borrowed power because the almighty does not depend on borrowed power. We don't need the sun, right? And she can't go out the sun. She still needs blood. So she has technically every aspect of what a traditional vampire has. So I'm assuming she isn't completely immortal, but I feel like she is nigh immortal. And I, I, I feel like Sid probably, since he does have basically a power of a nuke, yeah. he would be able to take her down pretty, pretty easy. I don't want to fight her. I, 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 like, I think that we might get a cool fight, just like a skirmish. But I don't think we're enemies, per se. I think that she can be just a nice lolly vampire that we can be friends with, maybe. I, I don't think it would be much of a challenge. But um, I don't think that the Bloody Queen is necessarily going to be a complete enemy, either. I yeah. can definitely see her becoming like a simp for Sid or Shadow. Dude, the fucking she-fox of the White Tower, she's already a Shadow Simp. She, she, she just shits on the juggernaut. It's like, oh, I don't like men like you. And then the shadow shows up. It's like, oh, my dear shadow. It's like, the fuck? Do we know each other? Shadow, because uh, you just yeah. everything by the way this episode's presented. She wants a better world. She wants a world of peace. And I could definitely see, you know, her looking at Sid like, oh, you know, maybe... You know, I can make a better world through him. And since, you know, Sid is all about shadow guard and creeping in the shadow. 
Yeah, just fucking June our team. Just lurk in the shadows with us. A vampire being added to his ranks. Yes! <laughs> yes! Lolly vampire. We don't have that yet. It's beneficial when you think about it. So I think that is definitely a possibility. I do think that they'll have a fight, but I think mm. that they might become allies yes. in the end. Just yes. Because of the very calm. I want like the, the she fox and Crimson too, if he's around and Juggernaut. I want them to show up and witness the fight versus Shadow and the Bloody Queen. And maybe Mary and Claire can also watch too. And then I want Shadow and then the Holy Vampire to then just become friends. And they're like, oh, we don't have to fight and just go away. And then everyone else is going to be bewildered. Like, what the fuck just happened? And then that's the end of the arc. The concept of a vampire really does fit in line with an organization. She heard that Shadow saved the girls in Red Light District. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, damn. News spread fast, man. That Shadow wants to build up. Now, um, anyways, with all that out of the way, though, there is something that does need to be talked about. What? And I like it, but it still does need to be mentioned because what? it is at this point in time getting a little bit annoying. And what uh -oh. I'm talking about is uh -oh. that Sid keeps repeating the dialogue. The first oh, come on. Chibi didn't like that. Chibi didn't like the NPC dialogue. I was just cracking up every time that he just saying the frenzy has begun. The moon is red. The time of awakening is near. I guess if you keep spamming it over and over again, you would get bored of the repeated running gag. And I guess when I'm reacting, it's more of a performance. So when I see it, my mind is almost conditioned to just start laughing because I still think it's funny. But I guess I could definitely see how people would see that. It'd get a little bit annoying if you repeated it over and over again. But, I mean, it's a short arc, right? It's just Sid walking around, repeating the NPC dialogue. And I feel like for what it was, it was very entertaining for me. But I can definitely see how some people would be annoyed by it. Frenzy has begun. The blood moon rises. You know, mm. run if you value your life. And Time's it's very funny. Out. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's I funny. I loved how he stole Mary's lines yeah. in the first episode and started using them to other people to make himself look, you know, good and all that because he wanted to sound edgy like a true edgelord. It, it's hilarious. It legit is funny. But, but there is something that does need to be pointed out here. I noticed what? that every time they do this dialogue, it's Sid doing the exact same animation sequence where you have the frame like this and then he turns his head. Is it? It's the exact same animation being reused. And so I guess you could say that's very lazy animation. Maybe the animation studios are taking this chance to. It's very convenient since you are repeating the same lines. Why not repeat the same animation? Maybe it'd be just a funny thing. And at the same time, you're also saving resources by repeating the same shit. But I'm I didn't not realize. expecting like new animation every single episode. I know sometimes frames do get... Damn, he really pays attention to like... Like he really pays attention. I didn't... I never realized that it was the repeated scene of him tilting his head and just saying that. Reuse. It's like transformation sequences, so to speak, in some anime. So I, I understand that's a thing. But the thing is, is that Sid has been repeating these lines mm. multiple times throughout just these two episodes alone. Pretty yes. much that's all he's been saying throughout these episodes until the very end when he talks about money and all that. When, you know, he's searching down the treasury, you know, he finally gets new lines. And it's even more funny in terms of, like, him repeating those exact same lines that Mary said to him to <laughs> yeah. her back to her again. And I wanted, like, a moment where Mary is, like, listening to Sid say this shit and he's like, wait, the moon is right. Hold up. Are you just repeating my lines right now? Mary probably didn't even realize that she said that stuff to Sid because Sid just sound that, found that so cool and he memorized it. But it'd be so funny to me if Mary just like realized like, hold up, are you not just seeing the shit I just said? And she obviously didn't catch on to that. I think that's actually hilarious. Yeah. But uh, anyways, the point I'm trying to make here about this whole conversation is that I feel like it's being reused. That joke is being reused way too much with him just repeating those lines and at this point it's like come on Sid come on yeah <laughs> get some new material I, I I know you can do it you're you're an edgelord and all that and I feel like that joke has kind of run its course at this point so I do hope we navigate from that and start getting like some more lines from him well the next arc we will but I feel like for the context of this arc to me it's completely fine if he just sticks he just commits the character he says fuck it i'm not gonna say anything else other than these scripted five different npc lines and that's it for this arc and you know what i'd be very i'm completely fine with that because that's what i'm expecting besides just you know those lines i mean once again we did get some lines in this episode but you know yeah and then accompanying that with the reused animation i mean hell even at the end of this episode I actually mm. feel it closely once the smoke clears like here i'll mm. show you he does the exact same frame. You can does tell he? by this frame, it's oh. the same stance and everything. Like, you know, the coat and all that, it just, it's clouded yeah. with yeah. smoke over it. So they're using the exact same frame of Sid saying. I personally 
don't care if he, they reuse stuff like that, but I can definitely see where he's coming from. And in fact, if you were to point stuff out like this, it kind of sets a precedent for other animation studios. Like if the fans were saying, oh, you're reusing these scenes, you're being lazy, and it kind of keeps these studios accountable so that the future stuff doesn't have moments like this happening, right? I, I doubt it's going to happen again. I think that they are just repeating it because obviously it's easier to do it, but also it's kind of funny too because he's saying the same shit. Why not just show the same shit too? The hour of awakening is near, the blood moon rises. They, they keep using that animation sequence. And it's just like, I know mm. that we're not expecting the most budget or the most like, you know, high quality art animation, but come on now, you don't need to be reusing the exact same animation. I guess I just have a much lower expectation or standard of animation than some people, uh, some other people. Because like to me, the most important thing is a good soundtrack and a compelling story. The animation is like third in the priority, maybe even lower to me. Like I will watch an anime, even if it's like shit animation, as long as the soundtrack and the voice acting and the plot is good to me. Stuff like this doesn't worry me too much, but definitely you should like as a consumer, like obviously you're going to want the best type of animation. So why settle for less, right? This much in just two episodes. That's my only complaint. It's a minor yeah. complaint. Yeah. Nothing serious. It, it's nothing huge. Yeah. That's very small in the grand scheme. A little trivial means. problem. But it yeah. is something that I have noticed while watching these episodes and I can't be the only one that has actually noticed that. I actually didn't notice. <laughs> now, um, anyways, besides all those little details, we have the stuff with just like, uh, you know, the whole like seen here in the library this is a Oriana. really funny scene talk about Oriana and all that you know just I, I i love the characters i love shadow garden all the characters in shadow they're called the shades right the shadow garden group but the main girls are shades right garden are just amazing i'm still an alpha fan but uh beta oh i'm an epsilon fan i'm an epsilon it's fan just, I, I love her she's a great character so yeah overall eminence in shadow episode two Peak. For season two, Great. it is good. There's a lot of aggression. Feels very quick pace. We're setting up a fight with the Bloody Queen at the yeah. end. And I am curious to see how that's going to go. I mean, I'm assuming she's going to be very powerful. But I... I think it's going to be the same shit. Like, you know how in season one we fought, um... Not Diabolos, but the girl that represented Diabolos. You know how we summoned the Bushin... That, the, the different Holy Land? And we fought there. I think it'll be some, a fight like that... We'll see a flashy fight, but at the end of the day, it's not Aurora. Yeah, but at the end of the day, the goal isn't to kill the Bloody Queen. The goal isn't to do that. I think we'll get a fight to make the anime episode exciting. But at the same time, I hope she actually joins Shadow Garden. That'd be fun to me. I feel like she might become a simp for Shadow. That, that's yeah. my educated guess. We'll see where that goes. Yeah. But I'll leave it at that for Dubvid from Chibi as usual. Go give it a like if you enjoyed it. Go give it a like if you enjoyed it. We do react to these live on stream if you're seeing on YouTube, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Hope to see you guys around stream sometimes. Bye-bye.